my sweet shabby loving friends, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. I love sharing all things DIY and decorating. And if you enjoy those things too, then stick around. If you like what you see, then please subscribe, like, and comment. Now normally when I am doing my craft tutorials each week, I'm standing over here at this table and this is what you see behind me. Now we've got something a little different planned for this episode. I am going to be painting and updating my sewing table. We are going to be using these beautiful papers and some Mod Podge to fancy up the drawers. I bought the cutest fabric at Hobby Lobby, so we're going to be recovering the stool. And then while all of this paint is drying, I've got a cute craft I'm going to share with you that involves a plinth block and a mattress spring. So all I need to do now is throw down some drop cloths in the family room, drag this baby down the hallway, and we will get these projects started. So I like to start with the bottom of my project. So I've laid this thing on its back so I can do the legs. And when I'm painting the legs, I'm going to be using this triangle tipped zebra brush that is really gonna get into all of these details on the legs. Then when I do the sides and the top portion, I'll be using this angled purdy brush and it really helps to smooth out all of those um, brush marks. Now I'm gonna start the table with the bare chalk paint in white. I don't have enough of this to do the entire project, so I'll probably get two coats on the legs and then come back and do the last coat with the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white, because this is what I want everything to finish up looking like. Now I want everything in my craft room to be white, so that's why we're gonna do this little makeover on the table. So now that I have the first coat on, it does not look good. So if you begin to start painting your furniture and you see that it looks like that, don't be afraid that you've messed anything up. That is what the first coat is gonna look like. So while the table is drying, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the little stool. To remove it, I'm gonna get this really long screwdriver because these holes here is pretty long. So I'm just gonna Get down in there and lefty loosey. And you stick it in there and just keep turning. We'll recover this in a minute. I'm gonna get these legs painted and while it's drying, we will recover our cushion. Here's my little supervisor in the background. But this is what the second coat looks like. It looks so much better, but it's not quite there yet. Whenever you are painting anything such as these legs, anything round like that, just make sure that you are doing it in a controlled fashion, always having your brush in contact with what you're painting instead of flopping it back and forth. And that also helps to eliminate a lot of drips as well. I'm gonna go ahead and finish just to here on the stool, put it over and let it get to drying, and then we'll start recovering the cushion. Now what you're gonna do is take a flathead screwdriver and you're just gonna dig all up underneath those staples. Hold your other hand out of the way so if you slip, you are not gonna hurt yourself. And once you get those all dug up and get those staples all lifted up, I'm gonna go back in with my needle nose pliers and just wrestle those out and drop them into a little mason jar here so I don't lose track of those and no one's gonna step on them and hurt themselves. I'm going to be using this piece as a template to cut out the size that I'm going to need to replace this cushion. Y'all, look at this fabric. Is that not gorgeous? I can't wait to put it on here. It's gonna be so pretty. 
this also has a pattern that it doesn't matter which way it goes. I just need to make sure that when I do put it on that the pattern is going to be straight. You can see that there are tiny white polka dots in there and what I've done is made sure that along each edge of my cushion that those polka dots are aligning straight. I'm going to turn it over and put my first staples in and I'm only going to put one on each side in case I have to go back and realign my design. Now I'm going to check and see if I like the alignment of the fabric. So now I will put one here, one here, one here, one here. I'm going to go back and forth and then we'll come back and I will adjust the camera so you can see how I do the corners. Okay, so here's how I like to do my corners. I actually like to eyeball it this way. You can see when I pull that, it smooths everything out. So I like to just pull it, smooth it out, do a little pleat up underneath here, turn it over and staple it down. Now we're gonna come back over and you can see it's messed right there. We're going to take our fingers, we're going to smooth it all out, pleat that fabric underneath there, turn it over and staple that down. Same thing on this side. We're going to pull it and smooth it, make a little pleat turn it over and staple it down. And you add as many staples as you need to. Sometimes they look like they don't want to go all the way in. And so just take your hammer and tap those down. Now I'm going to finish this side. And I'm going to do this corner. So we're going to come up here and we're going to pull it, pleat it, flip it over, and staple it. Come back here, pull this and smooth it, pleat it with our fingers, turn it over, and staple it. And then for this side right here, we're going to smooth it out, get that a little pleat up underneath there, pleat it, Turn it over and staple it. And I'm going to finish down through here. And then we're going to finish these corners. This here I'm going to trim off some of this excess. You don't have to do that. So I'm just going to trim it up just a little bit. And there we have it. We are going to start decoupaging the sides of our drawers. So for this process, what I'm going to be using is my Cricut brand paper trimmer that I picked up from Walmart. I've got these beautiful double-sided papers. The drawer is two and seven eighths, but I'm actually gonna cut the paper at three inches just to give me a little bit of wiggle room. So when we put the paper on here, we'll have a little bit sticking up at the top. And then once all that decoupage glue dries, we will be using Mod Podge. We're just going to sand that down and it's gonna give us a beautiful clean edge. And there we have it. So I'm going to put the longer strips on first, then I'm gonna come back and cut the section here that will go at the back of the drawer. I don't want it rubbing inside the desk there, so I'm going to place this just ever so slightly above the bottom of that drawer. Now this is so quick and easy. I'm just applying the Mod Podge. I'm doing a generous coat, but I'm making sure that I spread it evenly. I am putting it a little over the edge there just to make sure that it's going to stick down and not come up over time as it goes in and out of the desk. 
And because this is thicker paper and not the tissue paper, you've got a lot more leeway. It's not going to just immediately stick down. You can actually pull it up and re-adhere that if you need to. And I'm taking my Bondo spreader and I'm working it into that intersection of the drawer front and the drawer body. And then just gently pulling back and making sure all of that's going to stick down with no bubbles. And then I'm going to come here on the edge and just give a good firm pressure on that edge all the way down here and again at the top. So you can see there's just a little bit of a lip right here that we will be sanding off when that dries. So now that we've got that on there, we're just gonna go ahead, dip back in, and apply another coat on the top. The Mod Podge acts as a glue when you are applying your paper, and then it acts as a sealer when you apply it to the top. It does have a little bit of a milky appearance, but it is going to dry clear. Look how easy that was. Oh my goodness, that is going to be so pretty. And I can't wait to show you the new hardware I'm going to put on here too. Now that we have all of our longer pieces on, we're going to go back in and do our shorter pieces in the same manner. They are again three inches high and then I did three and a quarter right here just so I could have just a little bit at the back and we'll be again sanding that off when everything is dry. And I'll be doing that to all the remaining sections of our drawer and then we're going to start on our plinth block and mattress spring craft. I love using plinth blocks. Now what these are, are old baseboards that were used in Victorian homes. I love these things. This is just an example of something else that I had created with a plinth block. What we're going to do today with this one, we're also going to be doing crackle, but I'm going to be doing a pink based. This is the Craft Smart chalk paint that I pick up from Michaels, and this is in the color Pink Bliss. So we're gonna base coat that in our pink. That's gonna dry. We're gonna come back over with our crackle glaze, let that dry for an hour. Then we're gonna top it off with our Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Then we're gonna get our mattress spring attached and I'm gonna do something really cute and shabby chic in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing base coated. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know we are gonna start on the sides, y'all. Then we're gonna come back over the top and smooth all of those edges out. We're gonna let that dry, then we're gonna come back over that and hit it with our crackle glaze. So I am gonna show you the hardware because I have finished the drawer fronts. Look at that, pretty bling bling. That is so big and blingy and it is gonna look so good on my sewing table. So now we're gonna sand off this lip of excess here. We want to sand with our paper, not against it. If I tried to sand this way, I would be pulling up the paper. So we're just gonna go with the paper and away. And as we push down, it's gonna take several passes because this is a much thicker paper. But as we do that, we're going to create a nice crisp line. And then that just comes right up. See, that strip just comes right up. And that's what we're gonna be doing all the way down all four sides of our drawers here. So that's all we're gonna do for this evening and we will be back bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. So it is a brand new day, lots of glorious sunshine outside, and the perfect opportunity to get all of our crafting completed today. So what we're going to be doing now is applying our glaze. This is a Valspar Weathered Crackle Glaze, and I picked this up at Lowe's. And we're going to put that on there, and once we do, 
we're going to set our timer over here for one hour and while we're waiting on that to dry we've got some really cute things we've got to finish up as well the more you put on of your glaze the more of a crackle you are going to get so I am going to apply this pretty generously anywhere that I see drips I will come back and smooth those out because I don't want drips but I do want lots and lots of crackle and don't overwork it once you get it down just kind of leave it alone and go on to the next area and the thing about the crackle glaze is you're never really sure what you're gonna get if you have a different crackling glaze that you prefer to use you'll refer to your instruction. I have found one hour to be the sweet spot so we are going to start our timer and then I'm going to show you a little tiny Hobby Lobby fabric haul. Okay let's see what we have. So we've got the fabric that we have on our cushion and then this fabric I think will make some beautiful fall shabby chic crafts. These colors are just so beautiful. I think that is just stunning. And we're going to have some fun making some pretty fall themed crafts with that one. This has such a beautiful, it is a pale yellow with a gorgeous little tiny rose vine in the foreground. I thought that was just so pretty. Now this little cutie right here, I almost covered my cushion with this. How cute is this pink and cream buffalo check? It was runner up for our cushion fabric, but that's beautiful. Then I just have some regular, I've got some natural and some white cheesecloth because these make beautiful shabby flowers. So of course there will be more flower tutorials coming in the future. Look how cute this rose trim is. Isn't that just beautiful? And my idea is to of course cut them apart and use these roses individually on some of my other little shabby projects. So, love that. This is just some teardrop pearl trim. How pretty is that? Oh, love it. All of this was on sale, and you know how it is. If you didn't catch it that time, wait a couple of weeks and it'll all go on sale again. It may not show up on camera, but it is just a soft, beautiful blush pink pearl strand. And continuing our pearl theme, this is a white lace with the little seeded pearls all in that trim as well. So we have some really beautiful shabby projects coming up with these beautiful fabrics. I'm gonna put these away and we are going to attach our cushion to our bench. Now to install our cushion back onto our little bench here, I lay this down, take the bottom, and I'm going to line it up. And there's the same amount of reveal along the edges here. So we're just going to take our screwdriver. The screws are still down in there and it was lefty loosey. Now we're doing righty tighty. And when you're screwing it in, you'll be able to feel when that screw actually starts to go into the fabric, through the fabric, and then grab onto the wood. Now that we have our seat firmly attached to the base, there's only one more thing to do. I don't think that it's shabby chic, so to speak, but we are going to be gluing our little pom-pom fringe onto the base of our cushion here, and I just can't wait. And I did measure just to make sure I have a couple of extra pom-poms just to make sure that once I put it around there 
that it is going to all fit. So I will start here so you can see. I'm going to put just a little bit on actually the wood there and I'm going to hold that until it sets. I'm going to keep putting some glue onto the base there and then holding the pom-pom in until that glue sets up. Let me turn this just a little bit more here so you can see what I'm doing. Rolling it back, putting a little glue right here on the wood section and hold it until it sets. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way down my little bench here. On the corner here, I'm going to add just a little extra glue all around that corner and hold it till it sets up. This portion I'm going to glue and then I'm going to just trim off the excess. I'm going to trim this off here and glue that up just a little bit so it meets the end right here. And that is our bench. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. That is super cute, y'all. Time to get our crackle on. And again, we're not going to overwork it. We're going to just put our coat on and leave it alone. And hopefully we'll be seeing some good crackles start to appear. That looks good. And then once this starts drying out, we should see some more crackle, but you can see it's already starting. Just looks so pretty. So we're gonna set this aside and let it dry. And we're nearly finished with all these projects today, guys. So we have three coats on everything and it's really looking amazing. But for the final coat, just on the top only, I'm going to come back in with just a little bit of watered down paint because that is going to help to really smooth out some of those brush strokes. Now before we start on that, I also want to share that next week's video is actually going to be something a little different. I will be doing a live crafting collaboration with Annie from Indie Annie Jones at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. I am so excited and I know that you're going to love her and I know that you're going to love her channel as well. Alright, so what I have here is just a mason jar with water. So I am going to take my brush, get off all the excess water, dip in, and then come back on the top and I start a few inches away from the end and work back to the edge. That way I haven't deposited a large amount of paint in that area. And then I smooth it out. Oh, there goes my supervisor. She likes to lay in the brown chair. And same thing dip, remove the excess, get a little paint on the brush, start a few inches away from the edge, dab it down, work back toward the edge, and smooth it out. and it really eliminates so many of those brush strokes. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna keep that, doing that same process until I've covered the top. And then the next time you see this, it will be all staged up and looking beautiful. Now we're gonna finish up our bed spring and our plinth block. I had originally intended for hot glue to hold this on, but the glue alone was not strong enough to hold the spring onto the board when I wanted to begin adding some of my little decor pieces. So, Mr. Shabby came up with this idea and what he did is he drilled a pilot hole right here. 
Then we threaded the screw on the spring all the way up. And then once he reached the top, he took the spring, stuck it in the pilot hole, and turned it until the screw was screwed into the wood. I went ahead and added some glue onto the contact point here and the contact point here. So we're going to finish decorating this now. We're going to take some of our floral ribbon that I showed you earlier and also some of our teardrop pearl ribbon and we're just going to create some beautiful embellishments. Then, since this looks like a vase, we're going to be adding some flowers in there and it's just going to be so pretty. So you can see there are three rows of our little floral embellishment. This is so pretty. I just love this. I'm going to go in and glue this down. This is a dual temp, so I just turned it down to low, so it's not going to melt my embellishments when I glue those on. Add a little bit of glue to the back of the embellishment and to the wood, and then I'm gonna hold that down until it sets. And we're just gonna do that all the way down our little rosettes here until we come to the end. Isn't that adorable? We're gonna be taking some of our teardrop pearl embellishments and we're gonna glue those in place as well. And this time I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the wood itself because that little teardrop pearl is very tiny. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we get to the end of our embellishment here. Look how pretty that is. Now for the inside here, I'm gonna take my tassel and I'm just gonna kinda of lay it in and feather it out like so. I've got a strip of natural muslin and I'm gonna wrap it around the stems. So that's just super simple. Just covering up the floral stems Put a little glue in there. Then just pop my roses down into our little bed spring vase. And how pretty and oh so shabby chic did that turn out. I am so happy with how this turned out. I keep walking into my craft room just to look at it. And those little pom-poms give my heart a flutter. I hope you were inspired to paint up a little project in your home as well. So much for spending a bit of your time here with me today. I truly appreciate it. I hope you received lots of inspiration from today's video. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment as it helps my channel to grow. Come back next week for more kind of shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until next week my friends, be blessed.